I'm excited this morning. I'm going to start uh, a three-week series on the voice of God, uh, the voice of the shepherd. And um, as I've been preparing this, it's been on my heart for a few months now, and the voice of the shepherd, now is the time, like never before, that we hearken, that we listen, that we are directed by the voice of our almighty God by the voice of our shepherd. Let's just pray this morning before we start. Holy Spirit, we, we thank you that you are already here this morning. And I just pray, uh, Lord Jesus, that even as uh, I would share, Lord, that you will move amongst us. Holy Spirit, come and move amongst us. Do a work amongst us this morning. Lord, I just pray for hearts to be receptive to your word today, Lord, hearts to be receptive to what you have to say to each one of us this morning. So, Lord, I just commit this time to you. Lord, I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you will speak through me, speak the word that you are wanting to speak through me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So, New Year's resolutions. Who's got a New Year's resolution? Put your hand up. We've got a few, like five. Come on, does anyone not have a goal or something you are looking forward to in the new year? Any hands? Yes, that's better. Some of you are, are thinking about that, but statistics tell us that only nine to 12% of people that actually set a goal actually achieve it. And I started to think uh, as it's a new year and why this happens, why is it that actually it's only 9 to 12%. And then I started to think, maybe the why when we're actually setting the goal is not really solidified in our minds. Maybe the why of why we want to do this or why we want to set this goal is not actually solid in our minds. Um, there's a business development theory. I know you've come to church, but I'm going to tell you a bit about this develop, a business developmental theory, and it's by an author called Simon Sinek, S-I-N-E-K. It's worth looking at as a leadership team. We've uh, learned a lot from this. And Simon Sinek talks about the golden circle theory. He talks about you've got to know your why of why you, what you're doing before you actually go into the how and the what of actually what's happening. So the why, why do we do what we do? And uh, before I start this uh, series proper, I'm just going to share a bit about the why. Now, even children love to know why. When Rachel was little and I tell her, Rachel, brush your teeth. You know, even at like two and a half, three, she's like, why do I need to do that, mommy? Uh, you know, and they want to get some reason. Eat your fruit and vegetables, why? Or put your coat on, why? Because kids need reasoning. They're curious and they want you to talk it through with them. See, we all need a deeper reason of doing what we need to to achieve something. And even in marketing, people don't just want a simple, you know, features of, of, a, of, of a product, but they want to choose a brand over another brand. Now, say, for example, our church, some of us have come from different parts of the world, and you are here today, and you might have been to a few churches, but you've chosen Destiny Church because there's a deeper reason. I know I have, okay? So there's always the why of why we do what we do. Now, the Apple slogan, I know all of you are like, yay, Apple, but the Apple slogan could have just settled on, we sell computers. However, they chose think different, and that's like attractive, you know, think different, and that's was, that is their branding markets, that's their marketing uh, strategy to think different. Now, as a church, we use the butterfly slogan, and it's going to come up, there it, oh, <laughs> this PA team is on point. Now, I know hundreds of hours have gone into developing this beautiful slogan of the Destiny Church. And you might look at it and you might think, oh, that's beautiful. It's a butterfly. And before it used to just be one color, but now we've got a few colors. And you might be thinking, oh, it's just a butterfly. But actually, there's a reason to why there's few colors depicted. As a church, our vision is 
transforming lives through faith, hope, and love. We want to see lives being transformed through faith, hope, and love. And we see that all over the building, faith, hope, and love. But our church also has five, um, five pillars, as it were, five purposes. And you will be hearing about that through our fast. And the five pillars are actually depicted in these five banners. Okay, so each of the colors on that slogan is actually depicted by a pillar of our church, by a purpose of our church. The magnify is the red because it's worshiping God. Ministry is purple because we are all chosen. We are a royal priesthood. Mission on the other side is uh, blue because we go out, we become fishes of men, so the blue is the sea. Maturity is green because we are always growing in Christ and membership is the color of our church, which is orange. And those are the five pillars. And now because I've explained that, you know why, you know why. <laughs> okay, so that's what I'm trying to express today, the why. Now this whole aspect of knowing why can be life-changing. Because some of you may have set goals for 2023, like I wanna get fitter, I wanna get healthier, or I wanna lose weight, or whatever you want to do. But what if the why of what we do, of why we're doing what we do, is actually to please God? What if that why of, or that goal of, you know what, I wanna be the best that I could be, the why is because it's for Jesus because I want to be the best that I could be for him, because my lifestyle will please him, because what I do and, and how I do it will be the best version of me. Okay, so the why. So I just pray that as you go into 2023, that you will keep that at the back of your mind, the why of what you do, what, of why we do what we do. Now, over the three weeks, I'm going to be talking about the voice of the shepherd. And you might be thinking, well, why? What, what, what's that all about? Why do I need to listen to the voice of the shepherd? Why do I need to hearken to his voice? Because from the start of the year, we're going to, from the start point right now, I'm going to talk about foundation. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 29, it says about the wise and the foolish builders. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put it into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the, on the sand. The rains came, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Same storm different foundation. And I don't know about you, but this year and for the years to come, I want to build my life on Jesus because he is the firm, strong, stable, faithful, secure foundation. Amen? Yeah, you know, and, and I'm just coming with this word because you might be thinking of 2022 or the years that have passed. How was your foundation or what were you building your foundation on? So this morning, God is speaking to us as a church that we need to choose to build our lives on Jesus because he is our true foundation. Now the opposite, and that's what, what wisdom tell us. The wise man built his house on the rock, right? The wise, and what is the opposite of wise is? Foolish. I'm gonna use the acronym FOOL. <laughs> Not that you're fool, none of you are fools, but I'm gonna use that acronym this morning. So you're gonna remember this. Because if we do not listen to the voice of the Lord right now, because now is the time, if we do not draw near to him, the F is we will not reach the fullness of God. And I really sense that God is calling us to his fullness 
in 2023. What he started is wanting to complete, or what he started, he wants to move us in a certain direction. I pray you catching this as we go through this morning. John 10 verse 10 says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. God is calling us this morning to be people that lives their lives to the full. Now, in the natural, to the full could be, if it's uh, Jamie and Kai or uh, Kenneth sitting in the front, life to the full could then be the latest Xbox. X series, yeah, life to the full. Or for you, you know, it could be something, but what is life in the natural? Life to the full could be that big house or fame, fortune, achievements, that job that you so desire, perfect family, career, all of these things could be life to the full. But this morning, Jesus is talking about life to the full because we see in scripture, we see in his word that many people did they, they received that, they had life to the full, especially Jesus, because Jesus lived his life to the full. Why? Because he was about his father's business. He came so that he could die for you and I. And what happened? Mission accomplished. That's why we are here today, because he died and he rose again, and he lived his life to the full. And today, God is calling us, I want you to live your life to the full, because I have a purpose and a plan for each one of you. And you might be sitting there and you're thinking, I don't think I have a purpose and a plan. God speaks to us and he says, I have a purpose and a plan for each one of us. Now is the time to move into the purpose and the plan that he has for your life. And I pray this morning that you are catching that, that God is not wanting you to just live your life aimlessly. He's wanting us to live our lives to the full. And he wants us to start positioning our hearts so we can hear from him. He is calling us to position our hearts so we can draw near to him. And this is the crux of the series over the next few weeks. That is what I'm going to be talking about, the voice of the shepherd, because we are his sheep. We need to listen and hearken to the voice of the shepherd. How can the sheep know what to do if they are not listening to the voice of the shepherd? So this morning, that is what I bring to you. F is fullness of God. O is other voices. Other voices. Now, if you are not listening to the voice of God, whose voice are you listening to? If you're not listening to the voice of the shepherd, then whose voice are we listening to? Two. Don't get me wrong, God places good, godly people around us. And to be honest, it's not 20 and 30 people. It's usually the one and the two that God places in your world that speaks wisdom, that speaks honestly, that, you know, is transparent. God places those people. But if we are not listening to the voice of our good shepherd, Whose voice are we listening to? This morning, it could be a unhealthy, unholy voice that is slowly drip, 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 drip feeding into your life. You know, when I was preparing this, I just could see it. It's, it's like a voice. What is the most, who is the most dominant, loudest, influential voice in your world? I want you to think about that this morning. Who is the person that you will look to? If something's not going right in your world, who becomes the most dominant, influential voice that you listen to? I pray, I pray, I pray that you, we will start listening to the voice of God because the voice of the shepherd, the shepherd wants his best for his sheep. Always remember that, you know, people around us may want their best for you, but God wants his 
best for you. He wants his voice to be the loudest voice in your world. And that is why we have the word of God, because the word of God is our manual for living. The word of God is what directs us and helps us and gets us right. Now, I've been a physiotherapist. I'm a physiotherapist. I worked for the NHS for over 20 years now. And um, I've been a yeah, physio and our role has changed so dramatically over the last few years. Now, I'm a musculoskeletal physiotherapist, so when people, I, you know, if you've got backs, knees, and all of that, you come to us. Our logo is just do it. We like Nike. You know, come on, you've come to the physio. I know you're in pain, but just do it. You know, that's our, mo that's our motto. I, when I used to work in the wards, people with the knee replacements uh, used to, and e-hip replacements, we used to go and see them. And, uh, and we used to ask them, they hate the physios because we would go to the knee replacement patients and say, right, Mr. Jones, oh, did I, Mr. Smith, <laughs> it's time, I'm not, I'm not prophesying that by the way, but uh, right, Mr. Smith, it's time to bend your knee. And they might look at you and say, do you not realize that I've just had the surgeon cut into my knee, <laughs> sew me back up, and you're asking me to bend your knee? Now, we don't just do that for the pleasure of seeing the patient in pain. We do that because we have reasons to get that knee moving. But our role of just do it has now drastically changed. As healthcare professionals, if you're a healthcare professional and you're sitting here, our now go-to question is, how is your mental health. Because we're finding that our poor mental health is actually a roadblock to everything that goes on in our world. You see, the thing is, bad thoughts can hurt your mind. Toxic thoughts, drip-feeding thoughts can start to hurt your mind and lead to poor health, poor mental health. And I found, you know, that's why the Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, but with also all your mind. And I think that's the hardest one, to bring that mind, um, uh, uh, you know, in subjection to the Lord. Fix your thoughts on Him. It's not that easy. And this morning, you know, it's like a battle that goes on with social media and, and things that are going on in the world. There's a battle that's going on. And it's like we have a choice. That's why Romans 12 verse 2 says, do not conform to the patterns of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good pleasing and perfect will for your life. There is a battlefield that is going on in our minds right now. I don't know whether you're in it, but we're all in a battlefield, guys. And the choice today is, will you listen to the voice of the Lord? Will you hearken to the voice of the shepherd? Because as sheep, the Lord is saying, I want you to draw near to me because I want to take care of, of you because you are my sheep battlefield going on. This morning, I pray that those things that are ha happening in social media around the world is not the voice that is the loudest in your world, but God's voice is the loudest in your life. Amen, amen. So, you know, the other thing about voices is, is your own voice. Let's face it, that's a strong voice. You know, so often you are starting to think thoughts of, I'm not worthy, I can't do this, I'm not good enough. Who told you that? You told yourself that. You know, I have patients that come to me and I, I tell them to do an exercise and they say, I can't do that. And then I teach them, I show them the proper technique and they do that and they say, oh, I can do that exercise. And I say, who told you you can't do that except, oh, I thought I can't. You see, thoughts are so powerful. And God is saying, come on, you need to renew your mind with the word of God today. Because you know what? God does not say that you are unworthy. God does not say that you are good enough. God says to you, you are the apple of his eye. 
God says to you, I love you. God says to you that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Those are the words that should be coming into our hearts and minds. Those are the words that should be penetrating into our minds. Those are the words that should be life-giving, that bring change into our world today. Strongest voice should be the voice of God. The O, so we've got fullness of God, we've got other voices. The other row is opportunity to grow. You see, when we start to listen to God's voice, it gives us opportunity to grow, to be like him. I don't know about you, but I want to be like Jesus. You see, when we start to read and listen and practice the words, we can't help but becoming like him. Now, this week is a week of prayer and fasting. All the information, our pastors, Pastor Faith, and all of have got this together. A lot of work and thought has gone into this from our pastors. And, I ex, and, I, and I'm just saying that this is an opportunity now for us to even grow in Christ, for us to even listen. When we were in our connect groups, which is our small groups, and if you're not part of a connect group, see somebody at the connect point, but in our connect group this week, you know, we were talking about fasting. We're talking about getting excited. And somebody says, you know what? I'm excited about fasting because I've got more time to listen. Because sometimes we're getting so caught up in bringing our requests. Let's position ourselves now to listen more. Because God is actually wanting to speak to us. Because the Bible says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. God is saying, you know what, as soon as you draw near to me, I draw near to you. It's like God is waiting for us to draw near to him. And I urge you, I challenge you this week, spend some time quietly just listening to the voice of God, just listening to him, an opportunity. So Pastor Faith talked about different ways of actually uh, coming to his presence, of actually drawing in. She spoke about worship. Uh, worship songs that you could use practically. Also, what I find very, very practical, and for you that may be new and, you, and praying, and you think, I don't know where to start with this whole prayer. The easiest way for me to teach somebody, or, or even for my lifestyle, is ACTS, using the acronym ACTS, which is A, adoration. Just adoring God for who he is, coming, stripping off everything of asking, just adoring God for who he is. Confession, a time of saying, Lord, I am sorry for what I've done. Sometimes you don't even know what you've done. Just say sorry before the Lord. Confession, thanksgiving. May this be a year where we enter in in thanksgiving, because so often we can come with this list of this is going wrong, da, 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 da. We forget about how good our God is. We forget to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for that house. Thank you for the food. Thank you for the family. Thank you for health. Let's be a people that are thankful and grateful. You know, even this morning, Kai led the word prayer and he said, come before the Lord with thanksgiving because we forget. We forget. We are people that are good on the morning and hard on the thanking. So let's be a people that thank the Lord, thank him. And S is supplication, bringing your needs before him because the Lord wants to know what's on your heart. Make a difference this year with, you, with getting the word in our hearts and our mind. Make it a priority this year. Opportunity to grow. You know, the way our uh, church is structured is so good because we have our small groups, our connect groups. Why not get around somebody? If you're saying, you know what, I struggle to read the word of God, get around somebody. Start reading a book of the Bible. Start reading, you know, we used to do this, maybe choose Luke or, or John and start reading the book of the Bible and start, uh, you know, each day or each week going back and say, this is what we've read, what spoke to us. Start to encourage each other with the word of God. Don't struggle and sit where you are in 2023. 
move forward, find solutions. Don't be a people that are stuck in the mud. Start moving forward into what God is. If this is important to you, if you are saying, Lord, I want to hear your voice, I want to be, I want you to be the good shepherd of my life, let's not be people that are stuck like we were in 2022. Let's move in 2023 to where God is calling us because he wants us to come into the fullness of where he is. He wants us to start listening to his voice and he wants us to grow in him like never before. The fruit of the spirit, Galatians 5, to 23 says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Now, I've put this year because I think it was two years ago, Pastor Jonathan started the year off with fruit of the Spirit and, and getting one fruit that you would love to develop in. And I always go to the, uh, the patience one. But what is the one fruit out of those nine that you think, you know what, in 2023, I'm going to pray to God that I grow stronger in that fruit, that I get better and why not get around a prayer partner, like an accountability person that you develop in that fruit? I know for us as a family, when it was that year, we all chose one fruit and we would pray through that. And I just sense that's such a powerful thing for 2023. Which fruit of the Spirit would you like to get stronger in? Because when we start to listen to His Word, we grow in Him. The L of it is lost without God's word. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now, if you think of the shepherd and the sheep, you see, the closer we get to the shepherd, the more audible and stronger his voice gets. When we start to move away from the shepherd, eventually we're gonna get lost. We're gonna be moving away from him. And that is why the Bible says that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And you know, we've, many of us, we've been in ministry for a long time and for me over 30 years now in ministry. And when people come to me and they say, you know, I'm feeling lost, or I'm feeling dry, or I'm feeling distant from God. And the question is, what have you been reading in his word, which is the manual for our life? What has God been speaking to you? And the, quest, and the answer is usually, I haven't. So during this time, during 2023, at the start of this year, will you now move back to the Lord? Will you now get back to him? Because 2, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, all scripture is God breathed. Scripture is God's breath over us. And it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Now, what happens if we move away from the shepherd? We'll be aimless in this life. We'll be shadow boxing because 1 Corinthians 9:26 says, Therefore, I do not run like somebody who's running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer who's beating the air. This year, God is not wanting us to be aimless. I can tell you, God is not wanting us to be aimless because he's telling us, I want you to build as the wise person builds on a strong, firm foundation of Jesus. I don't want you to be a fool and, and, and not move into the fullness for which God has called you to. I don't want you to just, um, you know, listen to other voices. I want you to start listening to the voice of God. And this is our opportunity to grow. And without the voice of the shepherd, we are going to be lost because the word says that his, his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Now, I've said a lot today, but I still sense that for some of you, there's a spiritual blockage. Even as you sit there, there's like a spiritual block 
that is going on in your world. And we sang the song today, and Ash led, and he said, the Lord says that he could even turn bones into armies. In Ezekiel verses, uh, chapter 37, Ezekiel walks with God. And Ezekiel talks to God. And God takes Ezekiel to this valley of dry bones, dry bones all around. And there's a picture there as well. So dry bones all around. And God tells Ezekiel, asks Ezekiel, will these bones live again? And Ezekiel said, which is probably the good answer, oh Lord, only you know whether these bones will live again. And God says to Ezekiel, come on, Ezekiel, prophesy over these bones. And Ezekiel prophesies. And these bones come to life. There's, there's a flesh and then there's ligaments and tendons that's placed on these bones. Although it came to life again, there still wasn't any breath in them. And in verse 9, he said to me, God says to Ezekiel, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breathe from four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up as a vast army. This morning, God is calling his church to be an army. But when God calls his church to be an army, I sense this morning he wants to breathe life into us first, because like I said, for some of us, the worship team will come up shortly and we're going to sing a song together, Alive and Well. But when God breathes into us, there's also a part that you need to play, a part that says, Lord, I want to surrender my life to him. Lord, I want you to be the center of my life. Just think of an army. Just think of people that are soldiers in an army. When they come together, it's because they're surrendering their life for their country. And the Lord says, how great is your surrender to him this morning? How great is your surrender to him this morning? How much do you want the Lord in your life this morning? And that question is, is up to you this morning. For those that do not know Jesus, for those that do not have Jesus as their firm foundation, I'm just going to pray quickly as the worship team comes to the front and as we sing. I'm just going to pray for those that do not know Jesus. For those of us that have Jesus who is our firm foundation and have salvation in our lives, we'll know that that is the best decision that we have ever made. For those of you that do not know Jesus here this morning, I would just love for you to echo this prayer this morning. Dear Jesus, I am sorry for what I have done in the past. I admit that I have gone my own way. But today I choose to follow you. Today I choose to make you the savior of my life. Today I choose to build my life on you as the wise man did. I choose to build my life on you, the strong, firm foundation of my life, the strong, firm foundation of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. I, I surrender my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I would love for us to just stand right now. And even as we sing the song, um, Alive and Well, I, I just want us to just very prayerfully, I'm going to come back up and pray afterwards, but I just want us to just, 
as a way of surrendering, even for those that you are, that for those of you that are online, that even as you sing the song alive and well, that God is just breathing life into you, that He's breathing His Holy Spirit right into you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, that you are sensing His presence.